ladies, gentlemen, and everyone that can sing when the Tigers broke free, welcome to the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Our normal net on the 146895 repeater has been moved over here to the 146715 repeater uh, due to technical difficulties. My name is Nemo, November Echo Mike Oscar. I'm located in Denmark Township. I am also KE8PVL. Uh, give me one minute here before we get started. Uh, is there anybody who needs this repeater for emergency or priority traffic? All right, nothing heard. If anybody needs this repeater for emergency or priority traffic, please break in at any time with break and your call sign. I will concede the repeater for the duration of your emergency. Uh, again, this is the Wednesday Night Joke Net. We're over here on the 146715 uh, repeater, and I uh, appreciate being over here and having this repeater out there for us to use tonight. Uh, this is a directed net, and all those with a valid amateur radio license are encouraged to participate. Uh, any folks listening on scanners, we appreciate you being here too, although I'm sure none of them got the memo. All right, uh, this net meets every Wednesday night, and uh, we like doing it. I continue to do it, and I uh, won't stop anytime soon. So there you go. The purpose of this net is to have fun making each other laugh. Coming up with crazy punchlines for this week's joke. This is a three-round net, so please stick around or you may miss something. Uh, before I go down the list of regular check-ins, uh, please just uh, like to say thank you to uh, Ashville County Amateur Radio Club and to Tom NHCT for you letting us use this repeater tonight. Appreciate that. And uh, if anybody wants to get to this repeater, it does have a standard offset and a PL tone of 141.3. And the Echolink node for it is uh, November 8th. Uh, uh, let me start that over. The, the Echolink node for it is NHCT-L. And uh, well, hopefully somebody will get that. And we did make an announcement out there for the folks that do use Echolink and have internet. All right, let me take a quick break for time, and we'll go down the list of people who are regularly known to check in, and we'll see who else is here tonight. All right, let's start at the top of the list. We'll see if he's out on the radio with us. Uh, Sonny, KD8, LHR. KD8LHR, thank you for being here tonight, man. Appreciate it. Next on the list is Jeff, KC8LAR. All right, I'm sure he'll be joining us soon. He never misses a net usually. All right, next on the list, we've got uh, Alpha Charlie 8, Yankee Juliet. Okay, nothing heard from Wayne. I do believe he's still working nights, but he only has a couple more left. Next on my list is Dan, N8DRL. I heard somebody try to get in there. We'll get right to you in a minute. Uh, next on the list, we've got Ron, KC8, RJO. All right, Ron, thanks for being here this evening. Really appreciate it. Next on my list is Jim, KE8, LFR. Okay, well, hopefully he'll be joining us in a little while here. Let's try Jerry, N3, EVT. All right, nothing heard from Jerry. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if he got the memo. I know he's not in a lot of the group things, but uh, hopefully he'll scan around the frequencies and, and get to us. All right, next on the list, we've got uh, we've got Doug, KE8TBX. Are you with us tonight? All right, it's going to be a tell you one tonight. Let's try uh, Drew, Alpha, Alpha 8, Delta Lima. This 
Drew, no problem there. Thank you very much for checking in. Appreciate the in and out. Uh, next on my list is we're going to go down here to Joe, KE8DNF. Here's KE8DNF. I'm just going to be in and out, Nemo. I'm not going to be on tonight. All right, Joe. Thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate the check-in. Next on the list is Kilo 8 Zebra Victor Oscar, Ruth Ann, are you with us tonight? AA8DL All right, nothing heard there and uh, we heard the heard the Drew sign out there very good. All right, next on the list, we'll try Matt, W-8-D-E-C. All right, and let's try Andrew, W-8-I-J-C. All right, last one on my list here is Frank the Weatherman, K-E-8-Z-H-H. K-E-8-Z-H-H. I'm here at all. I have a question. Go ahead. On the movie, since I don't get to make a comment, can I make a comment now, or do you want me to wait until later? Uh, if you've got a guess for the movie, go right ahead. Pink Floyd, Final Cut. All right, that's a good guess, and I'll put that down for you. Next, uh, well, that's the end of my list as I have it. Thank you for being here tonight again, Frank. Is there anybody else who wants to check into the Wednesday Night Joke Net? Please call. Uh, Tango X-ray, hold on one second. Uh, KE8YQL, was that you, Roger? All right, Nemo. Uh, thanks for getting me in there, and uh, hello, everyone on the net. All right, Chris, I've got you logged in. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, TBX, uh, Doug, I believe. Go ahead. Yep, Doug's here. Hey, I'm just curious. Is the 895 down? Uh, yeah, we're having some technical difficulties with that repeater over there. Uh, Tom is aware, and he said uh, he's going to go check it out. He thinks it might be a, 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 an issue with the finals, but it, it is picking up a tone, and it is clearing the squelch, but it's it's really not spitting anything back out uh, as far as audio. So we'll just have to be patient with that, and thank you for uh, coming over here to this repeater with us tonight and being here with us. I got you logged in there, Doug. Thank you. Kilo Charlie 8, Lee Mal for Romeo. KC8 LAR, Jeff, thanks for following us over to this repeater. Appreciate it tonight. Sorry for the technical problems. Well, I'm sure they'll be taken care of uh, in the near future. I, I know I was talking with Tom earlier today, and he's, he's uh, going to be looking into what's going on over there. Uh, Jeff, good to have you with us tonight. Anybody else? All right, nothing heard. A great, good turnout this evening. I'm glad everybody uh, migrated over here. Appreciate that from all of you. Uh, let's get into this week's joke. All right, and this week's joke is, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? What do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? I think this is, nope, nope, it's not two bee jokes in a row. That was the week before. All right. So, yep, we could do that. What do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? And we'll start at, uh, we'll, we'll start number two on the list there. Ron, KC8, RJO, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, missed you last week. And what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Man, I think you've got a 
stump right off the bat here. I was going to say busy bee, but that doesn't make much sense. So, uh, going to have to put me down as stumped. Back to net control, KC8RJO. All right, or we'll take Busy B2. That's not a bad answer. I kind of like that one. All right, next on the list, we've got Drew, Alpha, Alpha 8, Delta Lima. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, what do you call a B that can't make up its mind? Oh, yeah, he was in and out. Sorry, I got two people marked in and out. So let's move down the list here. We'll skip right down two spaces. Uh, we'll go to Frank, uh, Kilo Echo 8. Zebra Hotel Hotel, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Another stumper, that's not a bad one for me. I'll count that as two. Next on the list, we've got Chris, K-E-8-Y-Q-L, and what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Well, Nemo, unfortunately, uh, you stumped me as well, friend. Uh, I wanted to make a guess there, and I just can't come up with anything good. Uh, so another stumper, K-E-8-Y-Q-L, mobile. All right, Chris, and I'll try and keep in mind that you're mobile when we get into the comment round. All right, next on the list, we've got KE8TBX. Doug, good to have you with us. And what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Well, the only thing I can come up with is the bee has got to be buzzed. KE8TBX, back to that. All right, B's got to be buzzed. Appreciate that one. That's a good one. I like it. Next on the list, we've got KC8 LAR. Jeff, good to have you with us tonight. And what do you call a B that can't make up its mind? Um, well, I got to go with uh, Doug on that one. Um, it's got to be buzzed. Back to net control. All right, I'm liking that answer. Uh, it's a pretty good one. Next on the list, puts us right up to the top there. Sonny, KD8LHR, thank you for being here tonight, my friend. And what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? In idiocracy. Got it. I remember now. Okay, not sure. Roger that. All right. Thanks for the answer. Now that I think about it, it's pretty funny. All right. Uh, that puts me at the bottom of the list. It rounds it out as I have it. Uh, before I get into the answer, is there anybody else who would like to check into the Wednesday Night Joke Net? Please call. Sure, Frank, go ahead. Put your answer in. Be wildered. Be wildered. Now, come one more time with that. I didn't quite catch it. Be wildered. Be wildered. Oh, bewildered. I like that one. Very good. Thank you, Frank. I'll mark it down as bewildered. And, uh, man, that one's pretty funny, too. All right, one more call before I get the answer in. Anybody wants to check into the Wednesday Night Joke Net? All right, NADRL, I hear you in there. Uh, you are got a little bit of static. I know you're down in that hole there. Uh, did you say you were in and out tonight? Yeah, I'm from uh, Yeah, I'm in and out. I got to go to the and take a shower here real quick. All right, Dan, thank you. Appreciate the numbers. We got you locked in as, as in and out. Thank you again. All right, uh, one more call before I get out the answer. All right, nothing heard, and tonight's joke is, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? A maybe. What do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? A maybe. 
All right, that's the official answer. Almost had three stumpers, and uh, well, that means I would have knocked it out the park. But that's all right. We got some other funny answers in there, too. All right, this is KAPVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Let me do some housekeeping, and we'll get, uh, we'll get to why everybody's really here tonight. Amigos um, Radio Club, Ash Tribulo's next official meeting will be uh, March 2nd at uh, Jefferson Conservation Club. That's 3600 Stanhope, Kelloggsville Road, 44047. Come on by, visit us, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, get you over into amateur radio or, or sign you up or whatever it is you want to do. Shake hands, drink coffee. We got it all going on there. All right. Uh, Coming up here uh, every Monday night on this repeater, 146715, is the Aries District 10 training net. That net meets every Monday at, at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. And uh, as, as I stated earlier, the p- standard offset for this repeater and a PL tone of 141.3. And uh, uh, just uh, this net here, normally over on the 146895 repeater. And hopefully we'll... Move some traffic over there, and we're always looking forward to hearing some folks. This is the Wednesday Night Joke Net, and don't forget, we do have a Facebook page and uh, and a YouTube channel. I don't always get to update that as quickly as I'd like to, but I'm working on that. All right, uh, and as you may have noticed, we change the opening every week. we got one guest tonight so far, and uh, that was from Frank. Uh, when we change the opening, that catchphrase that we have at the beginning refers to a movie, TV show, podcast, something along those lines, and uh, we will be giving away one of the really cool Wednesday Night Joke Net mugs that uh, KE8DNF makes for us, and uh, and we'll be looking forward to giving that away to the person who guesses correctly the most times in a month. Let me break for time. All right, that's all the announcements I'm going to get into tonight. Oh, wait, no, there is one more very important one. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, Andover Volunteer Fire Department, friends of ours down there, are going to be having a pancake breakfast that's going to be on March 23rd and 30th. So they're going to have two coming up here. Uh, Both of those are Fridays, and they're going to be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., and uh, it would be really awesome if people showed up for that. I believe... It's going to be at the fire station 153, 153. That's uh, the one right down there in Andover. I believe it's on 6, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I bet you can't miss it. I'm, I'm sure there'll be signs. People can go on down there and, and support the Andover Volunteer Fire Department. I know they'd appreciate it. All right, uh, that is the end of my announcements tonight. I will shut up and get into why everybody's really here. All right, this is KAPVL in the Wednesday Night Joke Net, and we'll go right up to the top of the list as we called them out earlier. Ron, KC8RJO, good to have you with us. We missed you last week, man. And what do you got for us this evening? Good evening, Nemo and the group. Don't have a whole lot as usual. Um, kind of enjoyed seeing the sun today. Um, that was quite a change. Uh, take advantage of it while we can. Um, since I can't think of anything else, I'm just going to turn it back over to Net Control. Case, uh, good to hear everybody. Uh, Case 8 RJO, back to Net Control. All right, Ron, very good. Thank you again for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Next down the list here is we've got, uh, well, actually, Frank, you're number two now, but uh, we're going to save you for your segment. And we'll move right down the list to Chris. KE8YQL, good to have you with us, my friend. And what do you got for us? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, It's been a pretty eventful week for me as far as amateur radio goes. Uh, I've got to play with HF more than I ever have and made some of my first HF contacts this week. Uh, It's been a pretty awesome learning experience, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, Other than that, uh, I was... Like Ron said, I was glad to see the sun shine in the last two days and appreciate it. Uh, from what I can tell, it's supposed to get cold again this weekend, and I uh, hope everybody was able to be outside a little bit uh, while the sun was shining there. So, uh, otherwise, um, things have been pretty slow. Just trying to, you know, keep to the grind and working and 
uh, playing as much radio as I can. So I hope everybody's well and uh, hope to hear everybody on the air. And uh, thanks for doing the uh, the net for us here, even if it was impromptu and we had to move here. And I hope that everybody was able to get the memo and uh, join us. So uh, with that, uh, thanks again and back to you, Nemo, KE8YQL Mobile. All right, Chris, appreciate you being here tonight and great comments. Yeah, the cold weather that's coming, it's not even going to last. So, But I'm happy for the sunshine and uh, making my batteries happy myself. Uh, that gives me the ability to sit here and do this tonight, and I, I appreciate that. All right, uh, and for those of you who are who don't know, I'm, I'm 100% solar powered and with battery backups, so... Uh, sunshine is a big deal to me. <laughs> All right. Next on the list, uh, I've got KE8TBX. Doug, good to have you with us tonight, man. And what do you got for us? Well, thanks, Nemo, and good evening, everyone. Uh, the only thing of interest I've got is I received my very first QSL card uh, yesterday uh, from a guy in New York. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have QSL cards to return the favor, and once my amateur license class gets upgraded on the FCC site, I will be changing my, uh, my call sign, so I may get QSL cards there. Anyway, that's it for me. KE8PBX, back to that. All right, Roger that. Yep, I, I I am right there with you when it comes to the QSL cards. I have not made mine either. It's been you know a couple of years now, and they're starting to backlog. I, I, the first couple, I was like, oh, I'll fill one out and print them out and make some later. Now I've got a kind of a little stack going over here, and I really feel like I'm I should uh, I should be doing something about that. So uh, maybe uh, maybe I'm right there with you as far as the QSL cards go. But, uh, man, I appreciate you being here. Let's move on down the list. We'll go down to Jeff. KC8LAR, great to have you with us tonight, my friend. And what do you got? Uh, good evening, Nemo. Everyone else on the net. Uh, not a whole lot. Um, just taking it easy tonight and uh, uh, trying to edit some documents and uh, getting a headache doing it. But uh, uh, we'll go for what we know. So. With that, nothing much going on, so we'll just uh, pass it back over to Net Control. This is KCLAR. All right, Jeff, always a pleasure to have you with us, and uh, hopefully you'll stick around for the discussion round. It's uh, it's it's going to be a pretty good one, I hope. All right, let's let's uh, let's move on to rounding out the list. We've got Sonny, KD8, LHR, man, how you been, and what do you got? KD8 LHR, are you still with us? All right, well maybe he moved on down the hall for a minute, and hopefully he'll join us up, join up with us in a few moments. All right, that brings us down to uh, that segment of the of the net where I hand it over to to Frank, Frank the Weatherman, KD8 ZHH, take it away. Record 
high for today in weather history stands at 70 degrees in 1997, and the record low is at minus 2 degrees in 1885. Sunrise will be at 7.09 a.m. Sunset will be at 6.04 p.m. And now for some weather trivia. Extreme heat is the number one weather-related cause of death in the U.S. and it kills more people and it kills more people most years than hurricanes, floods, tornadoes combined. And finally, the weather joke of the week. What does everyone listen to but no one believes? What does everyone listen to but no one believes? The weather reporter. The weather reporter. <laughs> All right, this is K-E-A-V-H-H, the weather guy. And uh, I'll send it back to Net Control. Thank you for listening. All right, KEA PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. And Frank, you are you are busting me up with that joke this week as we all sit here huddled around our radios listening to the weather guy. <laughs> Very good. Uh, this is KEA PVL and the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Is there anybody who wants to check in? Please call. Uh, KEA ZVO. Hello, Frank. This is Kathy Lee all right, Ruth Ann, KE8ZVO, got you locked in there. Uh, thanks for joining us. Anybody else? All right, Ruth Ann, uh, you caught us right in the middle of the, the, well, right towards the tail end of the comment rounds here, um, or with the, with that. So let me just get you locked in. You are... Uh, Welcome to the net, and thanks for following us over here. We had some technical issues over on the 895. I'm glad you figured that out, followed us over this way. And uh, uh, the tonight's joke was, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? And go ahead with your comments whenever you're ready. I kind of like that bewildered answer. I've actually been listening for a long time, but... What was showing on my screen wasn't even 715, and, and it wasn't accepting me when I called in. So I, I'm totally bewildered <laughs> about how I got in. K-E-A-Z-V-O, Ruthann. All right. Well, uh, maybe it was an A side and a B side. Sometimes there's an A channel and a B channel on the VFOs or an A and B VFOs on the radios there. Glad you got in tonight, though. Really appreciate you being here. Go ahead with your comments. Uh, nothing much else to report. Um, I'll have a new vehicle next time I see you guys. Uh, I decided to get a pickup truck so I can carry guard stuff around. Uh, back to net. K-E-A-Z-V-O. Ruthann. All right, very good, Ruthann, and uh, congratulations on getting a new truck. That's a big leap. I know I, man, I don't think I, I drove a Honda Accord for years. I don't think I could stuff my old butt into one anymore, so there you go. All right, uh, that wraps up the list here in the comments. Thank you again for joining us, and uh, let's get into tonight's discussion topic. All right, so tonight's discussion topic is, and, and it's one of my favorites. You guys know I like to harp on these guys a lot, but uh, it's another fly-by-night radio company. And I actually didn't know that uh, the Ham Radio 2.0 did a, a pretty good review on them and their 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 scam. <laughs> uh, but they talk about, like, literally they talk about being able to talk to National Guard and police and uh, it's only in the very, very fine print, like by the copyright date of their website, that they list things like amateur radio license needed or whatever. And uh, then they charge you to pre program it. And they're basically just sending you a bullfang and telling you you can talk 1,200 miles or across the country uh, 
with, with just something that's pre-programmed. And they don't even program it with the local repeaters. So there you go. And they charge you like, I don't know, 70 bucks, whatever it is. But they, the biggest thing is that they're trying to sell these, these, they are ham radios, and they do tell people they're ham radios, but then they tell them like, quite literally on their site that they they don't, they don't, uh, don't really need a license and blah, 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 blah. I, I honestly, I believe that these kinds of sites and these fly by night radio companies are, uh, are, are just kind of out of control and something should be done. Uh, so that's just my thoughts on that, but we'll turn it over to everybody else to kind of see, uh, about it. Uh, my emergency radio is just one of many that are out there that I've seen. A few of them are actually legit and running like LTE. Let me break. A few of them are actually legit and, and their claims, and they're running on, like, the old LTE networks, sort of like Nextel used to do, uh, but they're using, like, two-way radios. Okay, I get that. You know, you don't need a license. You're going to pay a subscription fee, whatever. Not everybody's going to get them. It, that, that's okay, but what these guys are doing is just out of the ballpark. All right, uh, this is KE8PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Uh, I'm sure some of you haven't even checked out this stuff, but if you get a minute... Check out Ham Radio 2.0's uh, YouTube feed and go back uh, about two months and you'll see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Or even just go to their their My Emergency Radio website and check them out. It's, it, you'll, you'll have a good laugh as an amateur radio operator, I'm sure. Uh, let's start down the list of uh, discussion guys here. Ron, KC8RJO, what do you think? Uh, are these radio guys out of control, these fly-by-night companies? Is it time we... We asked, like, the ARRL or the FCC to do something about it. Well, they're definitely rogue companies, definitely. And the sad thing about it is, uh, uh, although there's not much FCC surveillance and control anymore, the people that could suffer from it are the people that don't really know you have to have a license and maybe they get caught using them. Uh, that's That's probably nothing terrible is going to happen to them, but it is, uh, it is again, uh, how, what links people go to to make money, um, yeah, so, uh, I'm saying they are, are, are out of control, and I was thinking the FCC wouldn't take much, but that's an idea, is for the ARRL, ARRL to, uh, to, uh, try to come up with some initiative to, to, uh, shut them down, so, uh, yeah, that's that's just a. Uh, I think it's a bad thing. KC and RGO back to net control. All right, very good, Ron. Thank you for those comments. And uh, next on the list, we have Chris K E eight Y Q L. What do you think, man? These fly by night radio companies are they going too far? Chris, K-E-8, Y-Q-L, are you still with us? All right, I know he was mobile, so we'll give him a shout-out a little later on when we get to the bottom of the list. All right, next on my list is uh, Doug, K-E-8, T-B-X. Yeah, Nemo, I have to agree with you. Those fly-by-night companies are definitely out of control. Somebody needs to do something about them. Uh, I know they're certainly not fooling hams, but uh, they they may drag somebody in who doesn't really realize that there's not a license required, and they're, of course, going to get in trouble. Uh, they'll find out quickly if they get on the air and start using the radio, and <laughs> people start asking what their call sign is. Maybe, maybe that'll open their minds and they'll start doing some research. All right, Roger that. And you know, I remember back in the day, you know, when, when like Bofangs first came out. And this company is by by almost entirely selling the exact same Bofang radio most of us own. But I, I remember like, you know, the whole controversy of oh there's they could be opened up for GRMS and FRS and blah 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 and that's gonna corrupt the amateur radio community and this and that. And maybe a small little bit of that has happened, but it, it's not going to be like this. And and my whole thing is, you know, and I've said this to a few people I know who have amateur radio handhelds and stuff, and they're like, oh, well, I can use them. I'm like, look, 
let me break here for a second. And I tell them, look, so here's what's going to happen. You're going to get that radio and you're going to turn it on in an emergency. And the trained amateur radio operators that are in your area are going to be on that frequency handling the emergency. What are you going to do? Because you're not going to understand our protocols. That you're, you're just going to trip over, trip everybody up on the frequency and, and not be any help at all and possibly cause something bad to happen. All right, that's just my two cents. And, uh, you know, when you start giving, I mean, I understand emergency comms and people getting into it. And, you know, I owned a, I've owned a bullfang for a long time. I get it. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's me on a tirade there for a second. Let me move down the list to Jeff. KC8 LAR, what do you think, man? These fly-by-night radio companies, are they going too far? Is it time somebody did something? Uh, good question. Uh, yeah, I think it is. And actually, I think if they're false advertising, um, the Federal Trade Commission, actually, uh, since they're interstate, um, they are on the Internet, so... Uh, they are mul a multi-state advertising agent or advertising. Um, I think that falls into their jurisdiction, and if they're making false claims, then uh, uh, they should be have their feet held to the fire. So, um, you know, it's uh, one of those things, and uh, the laws are already on the books. It's just a matter of somebody having the uh, uh, wherewithal and the uh, the want uh, to take care of it. I think that's what it boils down to. And uh, with that, we'll toss it back to Net Control. This is KCLAR. All right, Jeff, thank you for your comments this evening. And, uh, and, and yeah, maybe the FCC is the ones who should take care of it. Uh, maybe, maybe the ARRL should get together, pressure the FCC, whatever needs to happen there. Because, you know, I, I, I don't want to tell people they can't make a buck. And if you want to make a buck program in radios for folks and selling them radios, you know, there's plenty of avenues for that without, I mean, I mean, they're not technically lying. They, they say you can do this and you can do that. And then at the very bottom of their page, like literally next to their copyright in the fine print, it'll say something like, uh, you can't license required for some, for some functions or whatever. But I mean, the whole rest of the page, if, if you were just, if you didn't know anything about radio and you just looked at it, absolutely. It looks like uh, looks like you could just buy one, get it in a couple days, and use it. Next on the list is uh, is Ruth Ann. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, K-E-8-Z-V-O. How about it? Fly-by-night radio companies. Uh, I know you're new to the hobby, but are they going too far? K-E-8-Z-V-O. I agree. They're going too far, and they're preying on the ignorance that is pretty prevalent out there among preppers uh, who, who think they can use all kinds of things to communicate just like a cell phone. So back to net. All right, very good. And, and just on a side note to that, not to discourage the prepper community, you know, I, I kind of consider myself one. Um, and, and many people look at me and say, yep, he's one, whether I want to believe it or not. And, uh, you know, uh, yes, I got a radio. No, I never used it on amateur radio frequencies before I got licensed. Did I have it so I could listen and pay attention and so that I could use it on other frequencies to communicate with people? Absolutely. You know, that that's the kind of responsible thing you do with them. And uh, and, and that's not knocking people in the prepper community that, that want to do it, but just not understand what, what they're getting into with the radio side of things. Uh, comms is a is a complicated issue all the way around and uh you know i understand a prepper wanting to have the best option available but yeah i agree again i think they're going too far let's go up the list here rounding it out we've got sunny good to have you with us tonight if you're still here kd8 lhr are you with us All right, well, nothing heard there. Okay, this is KE8PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Is there anybody else that wants to check in before I wrap things up or anybody that has any additional comments? Please call. Alpha Charlie 8, Yankee Juliet. Alpha Charlie 8, Yankee Juliet. Wayne, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you for being here. 
Anybody else? November 8, November Yankee India Mobile. N8NYI, Paul, good to have you with us tonight. Appreciate you checking into the net here. Anybody else? KE8YQL. KE8YQL, we'll get you for a recheck there. Anybody else? All right, very good. Let me go right to Wayne here, and thank you guys for, for checking in. Uh, Wayne, uh, tonight's joke is... Uh, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Our uh, discussion topic is fly-by-night radio companies on the internet, and are they are they they're scams? Are they going too far? Is there something that needs to be done? What can we what can we do as amateur radio operators to to see that something happens there? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, just uh, <laughs> a joke is going to be I don't know honey of fun or something like that honey pot of fun. Uh, as for the radios going too far, I would have to say yeah. But the thing is, uh, you, you got to get someone new who's going to make a deal out of it. They're not, we're to the smallest segment of the population, and the government is not going to make any more money going after them, so I don't think anything's ever going to be done. That's just the way it is. Alf Charlie A, Yankee Julia, back to net control. All right. Thank you, Wayne, for your comments this evening. Appreciate it. Always well informed and uh, glad you made made it over here with us this tonight. Uh, next on the list, we've got Paul N A N Y I. Great to have you with us tonight. Uh, we we open the net with a with a secret phrase. Unfortunately, I don't repeat it uh, again throughout the rest of the net. But uh, tonight's discussion topic is these fly by night internet radio companies. Uh, Basically, are they, they're lying and scamming people on the internet, selling them ham radios. Uh, are they going too far? And uh, tonight's joke was, uh, uh, what do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? So go ahead and throw an answer out there if you can think of one. Well, didn't he get a real good copy. I'm mobile across uh, Route 20 here in uh, North Kingsville. Let me make a uh, comment on... <coughs> Yes, if there is deceptive advertising interstate level, and the internet, I think, does qualify, uh, the FTC is a good one to start with. Now, of course, the other thing is you got to be careful is where exactly are these companies located uh, because there are different uh, band plans in different countries. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, RSGB as well as a member of uh, the ARRL. And there's different allocations over there than what we've got over here. Uh, for example, they have an allocation of around 75 megs, which we don't have. Kind of in between six and two. Uh, but I think uh, you know, you got to be careful because, like I said, there are radios that, you know, might be marketed, but they've got to be, you know, uh, type qualified for uh, especially commercial stuff, commercially built stuff. It has to be FCC uh, type certified, and if it isn't, oh boy, uh, you've got uh, big time potential big time trouble. And I'm key here for just a sec. But uh, you know, that is something to consider about, but I know there is a, I believe an FTC uh, office in Cleveland. Uh, I thought it was somebody can and they're willing to, you know uh, they're willing to take a look, you know, you file a complaint or you can check online complaint and uh, they can start working you know, start doing the process but I know the major uh, manufacturers from having talked to people at like BX Engineering they have to have a storefront somewhere at least one physical store uh, storefront and I don't remember just you know all it is, but uh, yeah, 
it's uh, you know something to uh, uh, consider. Uh, those kinds of tools. Of course, I've had good luck buying uh, used equipment. Uh, uh, our backup uh, 440 radio I have. Paul, this is KAPV over the Wednesday Night Joke Net. Thank you for your comments tonight, Paul. Uh, it sounds like you were running out of string there just a little bit towards the end, but I believe we caught every word of it. So uh, thank you for turning us back over to, to the net here. Uh, next on my list, we've got a recheck from Chris. KEYQL, go ahead. I, uh, I'm sorry I missed the, the, the um, discussion around there. I was QSY back into the shack here. So. Anyway, now that I'm a little more comfortable, um, I agree that uh, lots of false advertising and a lot of people think that it doesn't matter so much. You can just buy these radios off the internet and uh, transmit however you feel. And on one hand, uh, you can do whatever you'd like with them, but you shouldn't really. Uh, we all have a certain um, etiquette that we practice here, whether you have a call sign or not. Uh, it's a certain uh, protocol, like you say. And, um, I think it's important that we follow that. I mean, I've even seen it in my own within my own company um, that I work for, you know, and they, they just hand everybody out um, radios, you know, and let us transmit on whatever. And as, as an amateur radio technician and also as a or operator, rather, and as a GMRS operator, uh, I, uh, not that it's, I don't want to say unfair, but... Uh, you know, I put the time and the work and spend money uh, to have a license to be able to practice these things, and in a way, it almost makes me feel like I'm jeopardizing that by by uh, partaking in in their their sort of sloppy uh, rulelessness and just you know you know transmitting on a band uh, however I feel fit. And um, not that I totally agree with everything that the FCC does, obviously, because airwaves are free and we should be able to utilize them in a certain sense but also uh there's nothing wrong with having rules and uh and following them in a way that is you know f facilitates uh respectful you know i guess airtime you know and and being mindful of, of where you're transmitting and who you're interfering with and all of those things are really important and uh so to see it falsely advertised, you know, and to see people just willy-nilly, you know, buying a, a Baofeng or any other cheap radio and just transmitting however they like, uh, I don't feel that's the way to do it. And even if even if you're going to do that in an emergency, like you said, you can really um, cause a lot of grief for somebody, even if they are very skilled or, uh, um, you know, experienced with, with amateur radio, uh, somebody that just starts transmitting right in the middle of some sort of uh, emergency operation or whatever it may be uh, could really uh, cause a lot of grief for somebody. So I definitely think that it is uh, important that we are being mindful of how we're transmitting. And honestly, as, as amateur radio operators... break for time there. <laughs> um, as amateur radio operators, we need to help each other to uh, to make sure that we are um, teaching people how to be more mindful about uh, uh, their transmissions. So anyway, that's my two cents, and uh, thanks for letting me get in on the end there, Demo. Uh, I appreciate it. KE8YQL, back to you, sir. All right, Chris, thank you for those comments. They were well thought out, man. I appreciate them. All right, that rounds out my list as I have it. This is KE8PVL with the Wednesday Night Joke Net. We'll give one more call out to anybody who wants to check in or anybody who wants to recheck, and then if nobody comes in, we'll put a bow on it. This is KE8PVL.
All right, nothing hurt. That brings us to the end of the net. I'm going to put a bow on it, wrap it up as it were. I'd like to thank everybody who checked in tonight. Without you guys, this net couldn't happen. I'd like to thank Tom, NHCT, and the Ashtabula County Amateur Radio Club for allowing us to use this repeater this evening. Appreciate the letting us borrow it tonight, guys. Uh, also, like to thank everybody who is currently serving and retired from service to our country. Your sacrifices will not be forgotten. I'm going to go ahead and return the repeater back over to normal amateur radio use, whatever that might be. But before I do, I, I haven't been uh, announcing at the end of the net like I should be. The the phrase and the phrase tonight was, uh, nope, give me a second here, <laughs> the answer to the phrase anyway. And uh, the phrase tonight was, anybody that can sing when the Tigers broke free. And that answer was indeed uh, Pink Floyd final cut of the wall. And, uh, and that was uh, one of the songs that's actually in the movie that is not on the official soundtrack. So there you go. A uh, little bit of music trivia there to go along with it. All right, this is K8PVL. I'm going to give the radio back, uh, the repeater back over to whoever needs it. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, be good to each other, everybody. K8PVL clear. <laughs>